So in this video, we're going to be looking at how we can systematically name compounds going from the systematic name to formula and going from formula to systematic name itself. Now, in this case, right, you would probably just see this and think, you know what, I've got iron oxide over here. But that's not enough because you can actually get two versions of iron oxide. You can get Fe2O3, as we have over here, or you could actually get FeO itself as well. Now, in this instance, right, we need to give the oxidation state of iron within the name itself. And so if I were to name this, I need to think, okay, right thinking back to oxidation state laws i know oxygen is going to be minus two got three lots of them so that's minus six and i need to think how do i get from minus six to zero that's the overall oxidation state well i'm going to have to plus six plus six split amongst two iron atoms that's going to be plus three each right so i know the oxidation state of the variable uh, atom in this case so the atom that's going to have the variable oxidation state is going to be iron that's going to be plus three so i wouldn't just call this iron oxide i would say i've got iron and then in brackets all right i'm going to have one two three roman numerals i've got iron three oxide itself as well so in this example over here right i'm going to call that iron and then that's going to be two oxide itself that's the difference of iron two oxide and three oxide and it really shows the importance of why we need to actually use a systematic name looking at the next one we've got sodium uh, chlorate right remember we've got something that's split apart over here contains a sodium ion and then it also contains a chlorate ion right i figured this out as an application type of question because chlorine combined to oxygen right anything combined to oxygen that creates a negative ion we call an oxy anion itself and the name normally ends in eight in this case we've got chlorine in there so it would be chlorate if you had iodine in there it'd be iodate bromine would be bromate and so on if i were to look at this right i can think okay sodium will always have a charge of one plus and hence an oxidation state of plus one so i don't really need to systematically name that part but then chlorine can actually have variable oxidation states and chlorine itself right i need to find the oxidation state of that by thinking oxygen is minus two i've got three lots so that's minus six and then i've got a minus one overall oxidation state how do I get from minus six to minus one? Well, I'm gonna plus five itself. So in that case, I've got a plus five oxidation state for chlorine. And so to name this, I'd say, okay, I've got sodium. And then it's gonna be chlorate. And then the actual oxidation state itself, right, rather than going in front of the metal, it's going to go in front of the oxy anion, which is chlorine in this case. And because we know that the oxidation state of chlorine is going to be plus five, we put a five in brackets after chlorine itself. Looking at the next one, we've got potassium manganate itself, right? I mean, if you were to split this up again, we know potassium is going to have a plus one oxidation state because we've got potassium ion. And so that's going to be plus one. If I were to look at manganate, that's going to have a oxidation state of overall as a manganate ion as being two minus right because if potassium is going to be two plus altogether we know the rest of it's going to be two minus i've got minus two for oxygen four times that that's minus eight how do i get from minus eight to minus two oxidation state well i'm going to have to plus six itself right so the name of this is going to be potassium manganate as normal but then, right, in this case, I'm going to have a 6 in brackets itself. And that's going to come after the manganate. So moving on, I've got some for you to try over here. Feel free to pause the video and have a go. So starting off with the first one, we've got copper oxide. We know oxygen is going to be minus 2. Overall oxidation state is 0. So then in that case, copper must be plus 2. So I've got over here copper. And then that's going to be two and then oxide the reason why is because copper has a plus two oxidation state the next one we've got copper oxide again but in this case oxygen again is going to be minus two overall oxidation state is zero we know copper right it must be plus one in this case because we've got two lots of them overall we need plus two to balance it out we've got two coppers so that's plus one for each copper in terms of the oxidation states so in this case i've got copper and then it's going to be one oxide the next one right we've got a compound here again that involves a chlorate ion and we've got a sodium ion there so sodium is going to have an oxidation state of plus one so that means clo4 is going to be minus in terms of its charge and i've got minus one overall for the oxidation state there and then oxygen is going to be minus two we've got four lots of that so that's minus eight overall and then how do i get from minus eight to minus one it's going to be plus 
7 itself. So I've got plus 7 for the oxidation state of chlorine. That means that I'm going to have, right, sodium. And then it's going to be chlorate. And then I'm going to have 7 itself over here. The next one, right, I've got potassium, and then that's going to be chromate. Uh, so in this case, right, potassium, it's going to be K+. plus. We've got two lots of that. So that means that we've got chromate ions, which is going to be looking like this, 2 minus over on the right. And uh, if I were to look at that, right, oxygen again is minus 2. I've got four lots of it, so that's minus 8. And then I need to think, okay, if that's the case, I must have uh, plus 6 to get me from minus 8 to uh, minus two itself in terms of oxidation state so i've got over here right potassium and then it's going to be uh, chromate in this case and then the oxidation state of chromium is six so i'm going to have a six at the end as well right so moving on in that case right what about if we're given systematic names how would we actually find the formula so this bit is a bit more trickier compared to uh, the last task itself looking at three examples then starting off right nice and easy one we've got iron three oxide so that means that we've got iron three plus right we've got a oxidation state of plus three so that's going to be iron three plus and then we've got oxide which is going to be two minus right if we were to swap and drop this right what we actually end up with is iron oxide but then this two is going to come over here and this three is going to come over here that's nice and easy just like our uh, compound structure and ions topic that we did earlier on in the year if we were to look at let's say the next one we're asked to give the formula of sodium chlorate and then that's going to be seven the easy part is to say okay we've got sodium plus because sodium as part of an ionic compound is going to have a positive one charge right if i were to look at the oxidation it states the same and then when i look at chlorate right you can see here here I've got an oxidation state of 7 and that's chlorine having an oxidation state of 7. We know from this as well because it ends in 8 it's going to have oxygen in there but we need to think how many oxygens we've got. Now I'm going to make an assumption over here and that's going to be I've got sodium plus so this bit must be minus. Now if the oxidation state of chlorine is going to be plus 7 right I need to think how can I get to minus 1. How many oxygens which have an oxidation state of minus 2 will I need? Well I'm going to need uh, minus 8 to get from plus 7 to minus 1 and so I'm going to need four lots of minus two in that case so i know the formula right should be clo4 and then minus itself as well so the full formula that i actually end up with is sodium and then it's going to be chlorate and then that's going to be my compound itself there as well so looking at the next one we're asked to give the formula of sodium manganate starting off sodium we'll say it's plus and then manganate right it must contain manganese and oxygen because it ends in eight itself the oxidation state of manganese is going to be plus six and then the overall oxidation state is going to be minus one itself and we need to think okay how can we get from plus six to minus one well for now right we've assumed that we've got one lot of sodium ion we know oxygen is going to have an oxidation state of minus two to go from plus six to minus one is impossible if we just use oxygens itself because if we use three we end up with an oxidation state of zero overall for manganate if we use let's say four we end up with an oxidation state of minus two overall so in that case we need to think back to sodium right the oxidation state of sodium always has to be plus one if it's part of a compound and so in that case we must have two lots of that if you've got two lots of sodium ions right that means that manganate must actually be minus two in terms of its overall oxidation state so again going back to the drawing board i must have manganese oxygen and then two minus over here and then i need to think okay if i've got manganese which has an oxidation state of plus six and i've got two minus as the overall oxidation state I must have four lots of oxygen which have minus two in terms of their oxidation state because that's what takes me that minus eight from plus six to minus two itself. So my actual formula ends up being Na2 and then Mn or four itself. So moving on, right, I've got a task for you to do. I want you to give the formula of the following compounds. Starting off with the first one, right, we've got again sodium plus ions and then we've got something that contains chlorine and then it contains oxygen as well, where chlorine has an oxidation state of plus five. We need to think, okay, the overall oxidation state of this chlorine ion must be minus 
because we've got one sodium in there, which is plus for now. And we need to think, okay, how do I get from plus five to minus one? Well, I'm going to have to minus six, right? So I must have, in terms of oxygens, three lots of oxygens itself, because three times minus two gives me minus six. So that gives me sodium, chlorate, and then that's going to be ClO3 itself for that formula. The next one, I've got sodium bromate one. So again, I'm going to have iron, which is plus, and then I'm going to have bromate. And that bromate is going to contain oxygen in there as well as bromine. So in that case, I've got Br and then oxygen, and then it's going to be minus itself. And I need to think how many oxygens have I got? Well, if the oxidation state of bromine is plus one, oxygen, therefore, right, must be minus two. How do I get from plus one to minus one? Well, I'm just going to have one lot of oxygen in this case. So my actual formula is going to be this over here. Looking at the next one, right, we've got iron and then sulfate. When you see this sulfate over here, which is 6, that's the one that's going to be sulfuric acid, which you know as H2SO4, right? The ion is from sulfuric acid, so that's going to be SO4 2 minus itself. So in that case, right, the oxidation state, let's check if that matches up. Sulfur, is that going to be plus 6, right? We've got oxygen, minus 2 times by 4, that's going to be minus 8. Minus 8 add plus 6 gives us minus 2, so that's going to be right. If that's the case, I follow through drop and swap as normal. I've got iron 3 plus, and then I've got SO4 2 minus. Drop and swap, I've got iron sulfate. I'm going to have two lots of iron here, three lots of sulfate here, and remember, you need brackets itself as well. The next one, right, similar example, but in this case, I've got iron 2 plus, SO4 2 minus again. That should give me iron sulfate just like this. Yeah, and that's how we can actually find the formula from given systematic names itself.